Thanks a lot, Kurt. And, whoa, okay, I clicked on something here. Building on what Herod just presented, we will now hear more about the recently published version of the Blueprint, version 1.0. And this next presentation will touch on improvements this version brings. Please join us on stage, Matthias Punter, Senior Data Ecosystems Researcher at TNO. Thanks again, um, and already mentioned it a little bit. Uh, I want to take the time now really to go a bit more in depth in um, uh, the changes we made moving from version 0.5, which was really an initial release we did uh, late last year, and the 1.0 version that we are releasing today, um, which is a next step in the journey, because after 1.0 also further versions will, will come. But let me elaborate a little bit more on uh, actually why we need it. Uh, I think uh, my colleague uh, Geert uh, just mentioned it. Uh, he had a data space initiative and uh, somebody put a stack of papers uh, on the desk. Well, unfortunately, I also meet data space initiatives that do the same, but then they're blank sheets of papers. <laughs> so uh, where do you start? Um, and that's, I think, very important, uh, especially now that we have uh, uh, innovation actions uh, starting in the Digital Europe program. And also outside of that, many people are building and starting and want to grow uh, their, their data space. You don't want to start with a blank sheet of paper. There is already material out there, common standards, common solutions, um, and that's what you need to work from. To be future-proof, and also to work together and achieve synergies. And this is something that we are actually pushing for in the Data Space Support Center through the network of stakeholders. We actually have dedicated tasks on the synergies between uh, data spaces. And it is really the starting point for us to build this blueprint. Now, if I look back at the history, um, the initial work on what we now call the DSSC Blueprint was done in, I think, 2021, if I'm correct, in the OpenDI project. And that's, uh, that was this document titled The Design Principles for Data Spaces. And for the first time, there was an overview of building blocks for data spaces. It had four columns, interoperability, trust, uh, data value, and, uh, well, then we might need to have some governance. It was a fourth pillar of, uh, of building blocks, and it really catched on. I know many of you use this uh, to describe your own blueprints and your own uh, developments. Um, but time went on. People said, well, we have additions. We want to, uh, we have material to put, uh, put in there. And the first thing, and Tom Turka from VTT talked about that, was that we put it in uh, our starter kit. Um, that was when we started the DSCC project. Um, and then we moved to Blueprint 0.5 that we launched in the autumn. And the main change between OpenDEI and the autumn version of the Blueprint was that we put the whole matter of business and governance way more central into our Blueprint. Because we said data spaces aren't just about technology. It's a very important element and a key enabler, but it is very much also about agreeing between everyone in your data space on the business model. Uh, how, where's the benefit? How to finance uh, things? What is the governance model? What kind of legal agreements uh, do, you, do you need? We said we need to put this way more into the center of uh, a blueprint. It's not just a technical thing here. Um, so that was 0.5, and that also meant that um, uh, this list of building blocks changed, or the taxonomy of uh, building blocks. So we now have two categories, business and organizational building blocks and technical building blocks. And for business and organizational, it was not just one simple pillar, but we really put it into several categories. So that was 0.5. And today we are taking the next step towards version 1.0 of our blueprint. And it still has this dual categorization. So building blocks for business and organizational purposes and building blocks for technical purposes. But on both sides, we do a couple of things. We identify what kind of capabilities are needed for each of the building blocks. So what is needed if you want to do 
identity management, what is needed if you want to set up your business model, what is needed if you want to assess um, the legal conditions or the legal uh, environment that your data space need to, needs to work in. Then we identify the core design decisions. We identify common specifications and also, importantly, common standards. And I think also here a lot has changed between, let's say, half a year ago and today. We were really seeing a convergence of standards and a, com a couple of common standards emerging that we see is getting adopted in many data spaces and for which we recommend other data spaces to adopt them too for the goals that I mentioned uh, before. So zooming in, what's new? First of all, we updated the layout of the picture a little bit. <laughs> so, but it's still green, it's still blue, it's still the two categories, uh, business and organizational, and uh, uh, technical building blocks. So let me zoom in first on the business and organizational building blocks. It has three categories. Business, really the business drivers for a data space. By the way, we also know that some of the data spaces are not driven by immediate business needs, but by societal needs. I have to think of the health uh, data space, but then still it falls under this category. Why are you building this data space? What are the use cases that you uh, want to uh, address? What kind of data products uh, are shared in the, in the data space? And so on. The second pillar is on governance. So how do you, and, and very importantly, that's not just data governance, it's really the governance of your data space. And that is something different. So what kind of change management do you have? How do you come to agreements on, uh, 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 let's say, the rule set of your, of your data space? When can somebody actually participate in the data space? What are the criteria? So that's the second pillar. And then the third pillar, that is the legal pillar. Uh, and that's not just the legislation. We have a whole task on that, identifying how is the new European legislation impacting uh, the world of data spaces. But it also is about the contractual framework. So what kind of contracts do you need to agree uh, on a data space level and between participants uh, to set up and operate your, your data space? A couple of things have changed uh, there since version 0.5. First of all, on the business pillar, we have now uh, an overview of, uh, let's say, some potential business models that you can use and some ingredients uh, that you can use that can serve as an inspiration for new uh, data spaces. And we provide guidelines and templates for, templates for those business decisions. On the governance uh, side, um, I think when we started uh, today, uh, we, uh, we saw the conceptual model of the data space. So some of the terminology has uh, changed there. So we're talking about the data space governance authority now and participation management. So how do you manage the participants of your, of your data space? Um, and here too, we have introduced a decision tree um, for the organization and the establishment of uh, a data space. And finally, we also include um, uh, guidelines for the on- and off-boarding of participants of a data space. So maybe there is a breach of contract or somebody does not abide by the rules or chooses to be no longer part of the data space, then you also have to think about onboarding and offboarding or an offloading of uh, participants. So that's a change in the second pillar. And then finally, in the, the third pillar, and I already mentioned it a little bit, uh, it's, it's also the regulatory framework. Uh, the legislation is now in place, uh, so we provide a checklist uh, that you can use to check whether you comply with that uh, legislation. And we provide a contractual framework that you can use uh, to set up the contracts in your uh, own data space. So those are changes on the business and organizational side. Um, in general, by the way, we try to make it way more detailed and practical. In 0.5, we introduced this whole new category of, uh, of building blocks, uh, and now it's way more detailed and way more practical, and it really suits also the co-creation uh, method that we explained uh, before. Then moving to the technical uh, building blocks. So there we still have those same three categories, data interoperability, which is about what the name says, being interoperable on the data level. That's really about semantics, uh, data models, 
uh, things like APIs that you need to agree upon between the participants of your, uh, of your data space. Uh, that's pillar one. The second pillar is on data sovereignty and trust, and we talked a lot about that during this uh, symposium too. Uh, it's about identifying people and systems and organizations in your data space, and also to validate certain attestations like, is this organization compliant with a certain legislation or a certain security framework or other rules that are there in the, in the data space? So it's also about trust. Uh, what is the role of a trust framework in the data space and, and trust anchors in, in that sense? That's the second pillar. And then the third pillar is about uh, enablers for data value creation. It's nice that you can identify people and that they're trusted, but what can you do in your data space to make sure that you can actually generate the value that you've thought about in the green side in the business model? So those are the three categories, and under each of the categories you find a number of building blocks. Um, here, things were already a bit mature in 0.5, but we have taken it even further, taking into account the convergence that is happening in the world of data spaces. So to name a few of the changes uh, that we have uh, put through. In pillar number one, data interoperability, we extended the role of a vocabulary hub. So we really said you need to think about semantics and data models and APIs, and you need to have a place for that in your data space so that all the participants can come to an agreement on those data models. And it's, it's essential for interoperability and scaling of, uh, of a data space. So that's an addition. The second addition is that we have introduced approaches for provenance and traceability. And this was really a requirement that, that came from uh, our community of practice. Uh, people said, okay, nice, sharing data, true, but we also want to have maybe a notarization role or we have to uh, uh, record uh, certain transactions that involve personal data for compliance reasons. Um, so we've now included for the first time some approaches for doing that, provenance and traceability. The second pillar, um, uh, this is really where technological, technology convergence has happened. So we now see virtually all of the new data space initiatives starting to adopt new approaches for self-sovereign identity based on W3C standards for verifiable credentials. Uh, we've seen it in the GAIA-X uh, trust framework where this is being adopted. Uh, many other initiatives are, are adopting it. So we have put that really front and central into this pillar for data sovereignty and, and trust. Uh, we extended the role of trust frameworks, so how do you do this? And we provide recommendations on the usage of uh, ODRL, uh, the Open Digital Rights Language, for expressing your access and usage policies. So every organization can express the access and usage policies for his or her data services. And then finally, in the third uh, column, uh, we are using DCAT. Uh, which is the Open European Standard uh, for Expressing uh, Data Services and Data Offerings. I think many of you will know the standard from uh, the open data world, uh, but it can be used in a really nice way in data spaces too. Uh, and that's what we have explained in this uh, third pillar. A key change we did there as well is that we said data spaces are not just about data marketplaces. This was a criticism that we received after 0.5 because we had a building block there which was titled marketplace. And many initiatives said, well, we're not so much into a marketplace, but we, we generate value in a different way. Uh, so we have also different other value added services. So that's a change that we've put through in pillar number three. If you want to read it all, it's on the website, as I mentioned uh, before. But there are a couple of things that I still want to highlight that are new. First thing is, and that's something that we are going to start today and that we will also talk about in the next uh, presentation, uh, is that building blocks are nice, but you also need software to implement it. You need software on a participant level, so every organization needs to have some kind of software or service to join uh, a data space, and there is some shared software needed in many instances in the data space itself for cataloging, for providing this vocabulary hub or other value-added uh, services. So in the blueprint, now for the first time, we included a functional overview of those software components. And we will refine this complex question over the next few months. 
and, well, hopefully we can make it a little more simple. Um, and then there are design choices. Uh, and uh, Geert already talked, uh, talked about uh, that. So for each of the building blocks, we now provide through the co-creation method a sort of a navigation through the building blocks. Um, and then if you come to one, uh, one building block, uh, let's, let's say identity management, then you will find uh, a question there. What are the core design choices that you may need to make for this particular building block? So this is also an addition now in the blueprint. And this afternoon we will have a session where we will actually explore this in more detail. Um, and then I want to close off here. Uh, because the blueprint is a living document. Uh, this is version 1.0, so for the first time we have a more stable version than what we had in the past. You can all use it, it is on our website, um, and we encourage you to do so. Um, so please connect with us and use this blueprint. Um, I know that even in the text of certain calls uh, in the European program, uh, is, they also refer to these best practices. So we hope that we can come to a situation where you can say, okay, I can comply, uh, comply to this uh, blueprint. And we've seen many examples in today's, uh, uh, or th this week's event, uh, where data spaces are already doing it. Sometimes it's also perfectly possible to make different choices if you have a very good reason for that. So please explain that, but then also come back to us and contribute because those changes and those additions uh, might be very useful input for us to take it to the next version of the blueprint. So that's what I wanted to uh, say uh, here. Um, and uh, I think for the, for the next uh, presentation, we'll go a bit more deep into the software bit of the blueprint. But thank you for your attention right now.